Jesus, Marge, you almost gave me a fucking heart attack. <laughs> have you fucking been here the whole time? Shit, shit. I, I, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. I, 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 I must have fell asleep. I, 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 um, I, I was trying to think of a way to, to, to tell you. I, I was trying to think of a way to tell you, um... What? Uh, I, I ain't got the cash. What? Margie, I fucking come down here a half hour past my shift. All the way fucking down here. I know. And you ain't got the cash. You, know, you only get one shot with me face to face. Besides, if he's found out, he'd fucking kill me. I know, I know, I know, I know, but, 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 but this, this motherfucker, this, this motherfucker from the motherfucking shelter, man, he, he, he stole all my cash. He stole all my cash, and I, I, I was thinking that maybe, you know, may, maybe you could hook me up, and I'd get you back later. Margie, man. Margie. What? Why are you doing this to me? But, you know I got people to answer to. I know. You know, if they find out I'm giving shit out for free, then, then what's going to happen to me? Uh, you know, um, your, your secret's safe with me. What the fuck are you doing? I won't tell a soul. I know you- You're secret secret with me. I won't tell a soul. Marge, get the fuck up. What the fuck are you doing? Jesus. <laughs> Margie. If I give this to you, you never come back again. Yeah. Margie, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that? I thought you said you didn't have any money. Uh, I, I stole it from one of the shelter volunteers. I thought it was a wallet. <laughs> hey, hey, maybe I'll lie and use some money from my personal account in the Caymans. <laughs> Just have the money for me tomorrow, Margie. I, I, I'll get you back tomorrow. Railway, railway next stop. Metro Park. Metro Park. Wait, man, you're kidding. Next stop, Matushin. Matushin, next stop.
I haven't heard from you in a while, and I wanted to know if you'll be in the area for Christmas dinner. Your mother doesn't want to exchange presents this year, so don't get us anything. Hope you can make it. Bye. Yo, cool. It's East. I'm coming back from Philly an hour early tomorrow, so meet me at 10. Don't worry, the roost is clean. Keep it straight, bruh. Oh, yeah, and stop giving free rock to that bitch, Margie. We ain't running a charity organization, motherfucker. Peace. Yeah, what's up? What's up, man? First of the month. What's cracking? Nothing much. I was Philly. You know, same old shit. Same old shit. Any problems? Nah. Man, shit is clean. How much? Well, uh, I mean, we got a little bit more, but, you know, they're trying to come down on us, man. Motherfuckers is tripping. DEA is trying to crack down on shipments and shit. But, uh, besides that, it's all good. How much we got, man? 45. That's it? Yeah, man. Dog, you been slipping, man. You said you'll cut? Nah, man. Cops are getting suspicious. Man, man fuck I got, that. I gotta move. I fuck gotta move. that, okay? Stick to the plan, all right? I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, cool. I expect five next month, man. Yo, East. Yeah, what's up? You know anything about computers? Man, what the fuck are you talking about? This guy, he left his computer on the train, so I took it. Okay, so sell that shit. You think so? Well, what else you gonna do with a computer? I don't know, man. That's why I was asking you. Maybe, I don't know. Was... Look, man, sell the shit. I gotta roll. Stay warm. Peace. Place at 18. Parents told me to get a job. Where are you gonna be working at? Shit, I don't know. Cooper, is there something you'd like to share with the rest of the class? No. Perhaps you'd like to enlighten us about the economic roots of modern Afghanistan? I, I, I don't know, Mrs. Danielson. That doesn't surprise me. Could you please refrain from conversation while I'm trying to teach you about it? Hey, Coop, you want to go on a business with me? Congratulations. You have been chosen at random to win a free, all-expenses-paid trip to the Bahamas. All we need from you is a major credit card or bank account number to transfer the funds to your account. Please call back at your earliest convenience. Can't scam a scammer. Motherfucker. What the fuck is this shit? Password. Password. Alright. C O L P U P O R. password. How about. Fuck. Hello? Oh, hey, Ma. Yeah, I got Dad's message. No presents. Oh, why you gotta say that, Ma? How do you know I wouldn't buy one for you anyway? Well, I don't know if I'm coming, Ma. 
Oh, I might not have time with my job and all. H hold on, Ma. Shh. Ma, I, I, I gotta call you back. Ma, Ma, I have to go. Okay, okay, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, bye. Man, what the fuck are you doing here, dog? You 15 minutes early, man. What, man? I'm fucking lonely. I can't come talk to you. Lonely? <laughs> lonely? I'm sure while we having this philosophical conversation, I'm sure the 5-0 wouldn't mind locking our asses up. You know what I'm saying? You know they haven't left yet, right? Look, man, I'm not trying to cause trouble. I just cause trouble, to... nothing. Listen, you know nothing about me. I know nothing about you, okay? And that's the way it's gotta be. We don't need to be talking to each other, all right? You getting all lonely and shit? Why don't you call one of those hookers, man? They'll talk your fucking ear off. Hey, you said a computer? Nah, man. Tried turning it on a few weeks ago and it went dead. See, I told you ass, man. You should have sold it when I told you to. Now that shit ain't worth nothing. You probably can't even sell it for scraps. Man, I might be able to fix it. Fix it? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Your ass couldn't even turn the fucking thing on, man. You talk about fixing it. What look, man, look, I'm trying to help you out, dog. You need to stick to the business. It pays more anyways. Speaking of business, man, you got the money? Yeah, I got the money. How much? Five even, just like you wanted. <laughs> That's more like it. That's more like it. All right, man, I'm about to get up out of here. I don't want to get us caught up with you coming on early and shit. Look, don't pull this shit again, all right? Unless you want one of those loyalty tests. And hey, I added a new route to your schedule. What? Yeah. Why? Shit, you didn't hit your mark last month. Yeah, but I hit my mark this month. Now you want me to go stand out in the cold and freeze my ass off for another hour. You the one that came out here all early and shit. It obviously don't bother you too much, all right? Yo, come on, man. Hey, man, don't touch me, man. Do not fucking touch me. Don't you know I'll kill you? Your new mark is six. Don't miss it, all right? I'll see your ass next month. Is this fucking legit? Yeah, man, it's cool, cool. Ain't nobody gonna mess with us. I don't know, man. I mean, how do I know I'm not getting screwed? Look, here's the deal. I put down all the capital and buy all the product. All you have to do is pay me for the product you sell. So, uh, how are you gonna get me the product? When you moving out? A month. I found this pretty furnished apartment. Yo, now. look, look, look. <laughs> don't fucking tell me where you're moving to, all right? I don't wanna know where you're living, and you ain't gonna know where I'm living. Okay, right? but how are you gonna get me the product? Well, I got this storage unit up in Jersey City. That's where I keep all the product. And your name? No, my uncle's. But uh, <laughs> his dumb ass got VD and died from fucking too many bitches. And long story short, he paid for 10 years of storage space up front. And uh, yeah, they don't even know he's dead yet. So I take it off you making some trips? Yeah. I mean, I keep the place full of product. You'll get a key, of course. And when you run out, just go get some more. Simple. If we don't know where each other lives, then how are we supposed to keep in touch? Look, man, no beepers, no cell phones, none of that shit. That stuff is like homing devices for the 5-0. I know lots of motherfuckers that got caught up because of that shit, all right? We keep it old fashioned. We only talk business in person. What if shit goes down? Well, you know nothing about me, and I know nothing about you, so that's the best way to keep shit from happening, right? I don't like it, man. I mean, if the heat gets close, we gotta have a way of getting in touch, you know, to work something out. Okay, so we can meet at the first of every month to exchange the money or something. 
That's it? All right, man, when you fucking get your new apartment, give me your phone number and I'll call you if the heat gets close. What about your phone number? Man, you ain't fucking getting my phone number, man. Look, if you wanna do business with me, we keep it gangster, we do it my way. Clear? How are we gonna sell it? Street corner. Are you fucking serious? You talking about all this covert stealth shit and you wanna sell product in the open air? Damn straight. You go to the buyer, the buyer don't come to you. That's the first principle of good business, man. This is so fucking stupid, man. You don't think cops are gonna notice this awful product on a street corner? I designed the system so there's no interaction between parties. We draw routes of distribution. You'll never be in the same place twice and you'll never meet the buyer. Each route is assigned a region with dozens of runners. Like you, the runners will always be scattered and they'll never meet you or each other. Each runner is given dogs. The runners leave the dogs tied to posts along the distribution route. Inside the collar is the order and the money. When you remove the order, walk to the next dog along the route for the drop off. Then, all you have to do is feed the dog the drugs in a latex tubing. When the new runner comes back for the dog, the dog will shit it out and they'll have the drugs. That's fucking nuts. And that's not even the best part. Say the runners decide to stick around and see the supplier, the runners are randomly giving loyalty tests every couple of weeks by hopeless interrogators. And if they fail? Pull all your mother cunt. All right, but we're still carrying the drugs that we're feeding to the dogs. I mean, how do we avoid the cops? Well, the routes of distribution, they're based on municipal cleaning patterns. All right, look, motherfucker, <laughs> it's simple. The unspoken rule about the police patrol routes here in this region is that the police have to avoid city workers. That means cops aren't allowed to fuck with the garbage men, construction workers, anybody in the municipal union. Bottom line, if we follow the garbage truck routes and do our drops near construction sites, we'll never see a cop. Where'd you hear about this? We read it in the newspapers in civics class. <laughs> She actually paid attention in that class? Man, fuck you. At least I can read. <laughs> Look, I've been doing this for the past two years, and I know for a fact the cops have no clue where the supply comes from. Where did you get this idea from? Fucking econ class, man. <laughs> it's like drug dealing 101. <laughs> so you're telling me I'm going to be walking on these distribution routes? Hell yeah. I mean, your ass is going to want to walk when it's like 12 below outside. Trust me. What if the cops get curious? Shit, just tell him you're exercising. <laughs> Sir, can I help you? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I got this computer and it, st it stopped working last night. So what kind of a computer is it? Kind? I don't know. Like that? That size? You think it's a laptop? Yeah, 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 that's right. It's a laptop? Yeah, laptop. Okay, you'll have to bring the computer to the shop so that I can see it and tell you what is wrong with it. Yeah, I, uh, I can't do that. Why not? Well, you see, it's my uh, dad's computer. Ah, okay. And he'd probably get suspicious. But the fact that the computer is not working will make him suspicious, don't you think? Yeah, well, it really doesn't use it that much. And unless until I see the computer, I cannot tell you what is wrong with it. Well, maybe I can tell you what happened. Maybe you could tell me how to fix it. Sir, at this, I don't have time for this now. Sir. Sir, hold, hold on. Let me help you, sir. Madam, just give me one minute, please. Come here. What is the problem with your computer? Well, I uh, I tried to turn it on last night. Okay. And after a few minutes, it just it just shut off. But you said it's a laptop, right? Mm-hmm. Was it plugged in? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. You need one of these AC adapters. Your computer should have one of these. But if you do not have one, then I can sell you one. So you're telling me that if I plug that into my computer and juice it from the wall, that my computer will work? It should, unless there's something else wrong with it. <clears throat> uh, how much is it? 
Um, uh, uh, let, let me check. Uh, $59.95. And uh, throw in one of those twisty toys while you're at it. Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> right on time, just like I like. Yo, what's up, man? What's wrong with you? You like you just saw a ghost or some shit? You all right? You, uh... You ever seen anybody messed up before? I mean, really messed up? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some bad shit go down on some brothers, man. But what you talking about? Like, what'd you see? You ever seen a baby messed up before? You mean like a little kid? No, I mean like a baby. Baby? Nah, man. Where the fuck did you see that? On that computer. Man, that fucking computer you jacked. Man, I try to tell your ass to sell that shit, man. What was, what was wrong with the baby, man? His body was all mangled. His face had bumps on it and... Just everything is... Damn. You think, you think maybe it was born that way? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it before. I mean, I, I heard some people doing some fucked up shit to their kids, man. Not like this. Look, man, I, I gotta go. Um, you make your mark this month? Yeah, I got it. All right, cool. Look, man, keep your head up, all right? I'm out. Peace.
sick fucking baby killer. Computer, I know you got my message. Guess I missed it. Missed it? Oh, you're so fucking stupid, man. You'd have been three hundred dollars richer if you would have just listened to me. Fuck, man. You got my six. Look, man. I know you didn't read a paper this morning because your ass is too stupid to read. But I figured you might want to check this out, man. To what? That motherfucker bought the roids direct from me. Well, I thought we didn't sell direct. Uh, you think the cops know? Did you leave fingerprints anywhere? Or? Coop, man, that's not the fucking point. That's not why I'm showing you this. I intentionally poisoned that motherfucker. It in with the steroids. It's fucked up, man. Why, why are you telling me this? Hopeland's coming in. He's gonna be at the 6th Street Club tonight. Why the fuck is he coming up here? Is it because of this shit? Honestly, Coop, man, I don't know. I just know he wants to see both of us. 
Why, why does he want to see me? I, I've never even met him before. Hey, you will tonight, unless you want to end up in a body bag. Be there at 11 o'clock. Please. Cooper, sit down and pay attention. In the past three months, there have been 18 police reported overdoses in your territory. Today makes 19. Unfortunately, number 19 was an Ivy League athlete with influential parents. In the past eight hours, there have been federal raids on three of my drug dens in Philly. I wanted to speak with you personally because I thought you might shed some light on why the fucking feds are knocking on my door. Show me all. Show me the other one. No tracks, he's clean. That's encouraging. Let him go, he's mine. Cooper. I can't even express to you how badly I want to smear your fucking brains all over this fucking room. I need to make an example of someone to stop this from happening again. The problem is, no one seems to know who you are. So your death wouldn't do me much good now, would it? Would it? No, no, sir. The only reason you're still breathing is because you're so profitable. If there's another publicized death, I swear to God, I'm going to carve off your fucking face and mail it to the Times. Am I clear? <clears throat> yeah. Very good. Now, please, enjoy your evening.
man, where you going? Hey, I gotta head out. Listen, listen. Who was that girl you were talking to? Who was that girl hey, you were talking to? Hey, why don't you stay and dance a little bit, man? A little white ass piece of socialization skills anyway. Hey, what did Hopeless say to you? He, uh, he, he just said, don't let it happen again. Yeah, yeah, all right. So that means you can stay and dance a little bit? We don't get to hang out on the streets? That was your room. Remember that. I gotta go. All right, then. Have fun jerking off.
Cooper. You need to call and tell us if you're coming for Easter. Your mom says if you don't call by Tuesday, don't bother coming, so call soon. Bye. Hello? Um, I, uh, I have your, your computer. I, I wanted to bring it back to you. <laughs> wow. How long's it been? Five, six months? I, uh, I bet you thought it was lost or something. Uh, something like that. Wait. Stay for dinner. I better get going. Oh, come on, you've come all this way. I have to get up early tomorrow and... and so do no. I. Come on, we'll celebrate my reunion with the computer. <sighs> yeah, okay. Let's talk. We have company. Let's talk. Look, I don't want any shit, all right? Hey. Trying to be nice about this. Okay. What is that? He just brought back my computer. Why did he have it? Look, he's staying for dinner, all right? Just said another place. Okay. So what do you go by these days, son? Cooper. Cooper. Follow me. Take a seat. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, beer? Maybe something harder? Scotch? Bourbon? Actually, I don't drink. Um, some water would be good, though. I can do that. So, I thought the computer had been pawned or lost a long time ago. <clears throat> Is all the information intact? It's time to eat. Yeah, I mean, I think everything should be the way you left it. I tried to turn it on, but then... Uh... He tried to turn it on, and then... Who's this? Jesus, I knew this was a mistake. Now, Muriel, this is Cooper. He brought back my computer, so I thought we'd give him some dinner for his trouble. How thoughtful. Cooper, Charles needs to pray. I like to. Helps keep my faith strong. Those with the strongest faith reap the greatest reward. Remember that, Cooper. Well, you just prayed the food's getting cold. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for this meal. We thank you that Cooper could be here with us this evening. We thank you for his courage, that he didn't run from his responsibilities. Help us all to emulate his example. Amen. Please, dig in. Do you have a job? <clears throat> I'm in sales. What do you sell? Vacations. Wow, that's a killer business. Are you one of those telemarketers? 
No, I'm I'm more of a door to door kind of guy. So, how is your business? You making your numbers? Business isn't bad. You know, my sales have dipped a little recently. You're losing your clientele. Normally, I could trust a man completely who doesn't drink alcohol, but maybe you don't fit the mold. You don't drink? How old are you? 22. Your life must be pretty freaking boring. Well, it's true. Cooper, the world of sales is cutthroat. I know. I deal with the winners and the losers oh, every single day. Maybe he's just going through a rough Donna, Mom, Cooper listen, needs to hear the truth. I don't want to have to listen to this Maybe right now. Hey, you speak when you're spoken to. Cooper, do you want to know what it takes to survive in this world? Oh, Dad, this random guy does not want to hear about your philosophy on life. No one does. Cooper, look at me. Do you know what it takes to survive in this world? God, I hate this freaking family! If you want to know how to survive in this world, you have to know your weakness. Cooper, pay attention. Weakness. It's what separates the living from the dead. The strong survive because they know how to exploit weakness. If you want to be strong, you have to learn how to eliminate your weaknesses. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you follow me? It's like this, Cooper. Most people indulge their weakness. They allow their weakness to cloud their judgment. Then before they know it, their weakness has destroyed them. I look at you and I can immediately see your weakness. You believe people are inherently good. You believe that behind every person, no matter how horrible they are, there is something worth salvaging. Well, I'm here to tell you that is absolutely false. Why? Because the only people worth saving in this world are the people who have conquered their weakness. And if they haven't conquered their weakness? Kill them. What? Kill them. It's the only ethical thing to do. You have to sever the hand that feeds you. Make no mistake about it. The highest calling, the highest calling this world has to offer is the opportunity to eliminate those who are weak. Unless you are willing to do that, you will be eliminated like everyone else. From one salesman to another, I strongly suggest, for your own good, that you find another line of work. Are you finished? Thank you. Well, it's getting late, and you and I both have to get up early tomorrow. Yeah, I should get going. I'll show you to the door. Cooper, you, uh, you never told me if all the data was still intact. Yeah, I think it's all there. You think? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's all there. Good. Well, thanks for bringing it back. Cooper, remember what I told you. Find a different line of work. You might still be able to find your higher calling. Yeah, hi, um, I, I need to reverse look up. Address, please. 23 Franklin Street, Metuchen, New Jersey. Please hold. Five, 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 seven, three, two, two, one, eight, two. Thank you.
Hello? Muriel. Yeah, who's this? Uh, hi, it's Cooper. Who? The, the guy who brought your dad's computer home the other night. Oh, what do you want? I'm not gonna buy a freaking vacation from you. No, no. I was just wondering if maybe we could talk sometime. About what? I don't know. Just wanted to talk to you. I oh, don't know. You're kind of weird. Not everyone goes to someone's house and has dinner with a random family. Come on, I'm not that bad. I just want to talk, that's all. When? Tomorrow? Where do you want to meet? Um... Uh, there's a sushi shop down by the train station. We can meet there. Do you know what? Do you know it? Meet Sakura? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Fine, I'll see you at five. So, how's school going? How do you think it's going? How was it when you were there? <laughs> Sucked. Yeah, well, not much has changed. Is there something you wanted to talk about? Because if not, there's lots of other things I'd rather be doing. Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? Pays the bills, I guess. You? Life's shitty. What can I say? The drugs help? You sell them. Do you think they help? Can I say, Cooper, you're not exactly vocal. And from what I observed the other night at dinner, you probably couldn't even sell water to a burn victim. Besides, you're friends with the beast, right? I've seen you two talk in a Sixth Street club. And since you don't drink, you probably don't use, so selling's your only option left. Just put two and two together. Look, you're not going to convince me to stop using. I've already had this conversation with my rehab counselor. I'm not trying to convince you to stop. Well, then what are you doing? Because it sure as hell sounds like the beginning of a don't do drugs speech. I just want to understand why. Why? You want to know why? Maybe it's because it's better than feeling pain all the time. Because being high is more fun than your normal, boring-ass life. But you wouldn't know what I'm talking about because you like the boring side of life. You're just like my dad. Look, I'm out of here. If I wanted to talk about this stuff, I'd be back in rehab. Have a nice life. Who poisoned the baby? What did you just say? Who poisoned the baby? How did you know about that? How the fuck did you know about that? Cooper. How did you know about that? did it. It was just a guess from the pictures I saw on your dad's computer. You better not tell anyone about this or I'll kill you, I swear. I, I won't tell anyone. I if promise. you tell a soul, I swear to God I'll kill you. Mira, I, I promise. Fine. It stays between us. You still haven't told me who poisoned the baby. Muriel. 
How'd, how'd you get this number? I asked him for it. What's the matter? How did you know that the baby was poisoned? I, I, I told you, it was just a silly guess. I swear no one told me. It was just a silly guess. M maybe it was intuition, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I swear. Hello, Muriel? He was mine, you know? I was high one night, wasn't thinking straight. And I left the party with some guy. I woke up the next morning in a field, my pants covered in blood. Did he rape you? I don't know. But even if he did, it, it wouldn't matter. Nobody saw me leave the party with him. Even my friends couldn't tell me who he was. Did you tell anybody? I told my mom. She went ballistic. She made me take a home pregnancy test. And when I came back positive, I thought she was gonna kill me. Did she tell your dad? No. She told me if I said anything about this to my dad that she'd kick me out of the house. She told me I had to go get an abortion. And I said I would. But when I got there, I, I couldn't do it. Why not? I don't know. I felt like might be a chance for me to do something right. I decided from that moment on that I would stop using and I left the clinic. Did you tell your mom? No. When she asked, I told her that I had had the abortion. How long did it take before she figured it out? Not too long, I don't think. I was throwing up every morning for the next month. <laughs> Did she say anything? No, but about five months into my pregnancy, I started to show and my dad noticed. What did your dad say when he found out? He's disappointed. He kept saying things like, if you hadn't partied so hard, this wouldn't have happened. But then he had a real change of heart. When he found out that I decided not to have the abortion and I quit using, he said that he respected me for my decision to keep the baby. And because of it, he would help me raise him. 
We even talked about babies' names. He wanted William and I wanted Jeffrey. <laughs> we never could decide on which one. My mom resented us when my dad stuck up for me. How do you know? A few weeks after I told my dad, I got a horrible acne from the hormones. My mom recommended Accutane. Have you ever heard of Accutane? Mm -hmm. Neither had I. Accutane causes horrible birth defects. When he was born, his immune system was really weak, and the doctors accidentally gave him an attenuated form of the smallpox vaccine. He fully contracted the disease and died a day after that picture had been taken. So you think your mom gave you that stuff on purpose? My dad's a chemist. He's constantly researching the different chemical compositions of drugs for his pharmaceutical company. I'm sure he told her how bad that stuff is for pregnant women before she started taking it. Why would she do that? I don't know. Maybe she thought I'd screw up my life if I had him. Even if she believed that, no reason to kill a baby. But you had the same intuition as me. If you doubted that she did this, then why'd you say that he was poisoned? I, uh, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I just, uh, I just kind of wanted you to stay. What about your parents? I haven't seen him in years. Really? Why? I don't know. They'd probably ask me where I'm working and I'd tell them I'm selling vacations, which, like you, they'd see through in a second. Then why don't you do something else? You're not addicted. You don't have a habit to support. I know. What else could I do that would pay as well? You know? It's easy money. The way you set it up, I never really had to worry about people on the other end. Meryl, have you seen any of the pictures of yourself on your dad's computer? Sure, why? I, I've never seen anyone who looks so sad. You're really a lot like my father. Maybe we just both want to see you get better. You're sweet, Cooper. What if What if I stop selling? Will you stop using? It's not that easy, Cooper. I know. I know, but I mean, that could help. How can you eat that shit for breakfast? That's good. You want some? I gotta go to school. Uh, will you call me? Maybe we could get together sometime. Like that. See ya. Bye. Yo, how much? Six. I mean, what the fuck is this? Finish, man. Took all the product I didn't sell back to the storage unit. Finish? What the fuck you mean, finished? What is she gonna do, Coop? You ain't got no fucking skills. Ease, man. I, I just, just can't do it anymore. 
could really disappoint me, man. That's why I brought you in in the first place. You had no conscience. I know, I know, I know. I ju just don't feel that way anymore. What? Like you didn't know that shit kills? What'd you expect? Do you think we selling penicillin? We selling death, man. That's our market. There's plenty of motherfuckers willing to buy. East, man. You... You killed 19 people. Cool, man, I killed way more than 19 people. I mark at least 10 a month, and that's just in the last four years. I told you, we're dealing in death. What about you, Coop? Huh? How many motherfuckers you kill? Yeah, you don't sell direct to the bar, but you part of the chain. How many motherfuckers you kill by stuffing drugs down those dogs' throats? Huh? Too many, man. Can I help you? That's okay. Feel free to look around if you like. Uh, wait right there, I'll be right down. I'm Steve, the pastor of this church. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Cooper. Cooper, it's nice to meet you, Cooper. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for, or uh, did you just uh, just want some time alone? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, so, so you got any jobs here? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, we do have a janitor position that's open. <laughs> you said a higher calling. You know, in the eyes of the Lord, it is the highest. So do you uh, think you might be interested? Sure. Great. Why don't you come with me and then we'll get the paperwork started, okay? Thank you. 
Personally, what's this? I know it isn't a lot, but uh, it's just our way of telling you how much we really appreciate what you've done for us around here. Thanks. And maybe if you're free on Sunday, you might want to come down and check out a service. Maybe I will. Well, that'll be great. Cool. See you around. See you. Thanks. Okay. to seeing you next week. I'm happy to hear you working at a church. That's great. Anyway, give us a call and tell us when we should be expecting you. Okay? All right. Bye-bye. Hey, Cooper. It's Muriel. I left my purse over at your apartment. I had a real fun time with you last night, and I hope we can hang out for a little while today. I'll be over at 1.30 to pick it up, so uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. Watch out here. Hey, Cooper, it's Muriel. I left my purse over at your apartment. I had a real fun time with you last night, and I hope we can hang out for a little while today. I'll be over at 1.30 to pick it up, so uh, I'll see you soon. Bye. Yo! Watch out here. been a while since I had to use these bad boys. <laughs> Haven't had to give a loyalty test in a while. Cool. Get your little bitch ass up. That's the way out. You alright, man? Huh? I want to make sure you're still with me. Come on, come on. Up. You gotta play. <coughs> Good job, Coop. You pass. Bring that chair over here. Ha, <laughs> 
can give me. Cooper, please state your name for our viewers. Cooper E. Hopeland. I understand that you are related to the famous drug lord Charles Hopeland. Hopeland's coming in. He'll be at the Sixth Street Club tonight. Uh, um, I'm here to see Hopeland. Oh, you must be Cooper. Cooper, I can't even express to you how badly I want to smear your fucking brains all over this fucking room. 
Yes, I'm his son. What are your reasons for giving this interview today? I guess you could say I followed him and expanded upon my father's footsteps. I want to show the world what I've done, what I plan to do. What have you done, Cooper? I've systematically overdosed over 720 drug abusers in five states. 720? That's a lot of people. You think? It's not nearly as many as it should be. How did you manage to overdose that many people without being caught? At least the drugs with small traces of hydrocyanic acid and fentanyl. What'd you kill him? Fentanyl. I mix it in with the steroids. I broke each person up into one of two categories, immediate and long-term. Those chosen for immediate overdose were given fentanyl. Those chosen for long-term would overdose once enough hydrocyanic acid had built up in their systems. This spaced out the deaths more evenly. How do you determine who belongs in which category? It depends on their state of need. If a person's life hopelessly revolves around drugs, then they qualify for the immediate overdose. Those in the earlier stages of addiction were given hydrocyanic acid with the hopes that they would recover before enough had built up in their systems. You seem to know a lot about chemicals and poisons. Well, my father's a chemist. He's constantly researching the different chemical compositions of drugs. So what do you go by these days, son? Oh, that can't be. Let him go. He's mine. How long has this been going on? A little over four years. And in all that time, no one has ever become suspicious of how everyone you sell to keeps dying. Why would they? The only time an addict sees my face is when I sell them their final hit. Margie, if I give this to you, you never come back again. And with all those bodies, how have you avoided being caught by the police? Let's just say I have friends who work for the city. The routes of distribution, they're based on municipal cleaning patterns. So you have friends in the police department? No. My father taught me that the police can often make things more complicated than they need to be. Although some of the bodies I produced were found by the police, I developed a disposal system for the others. Did you know that the acids produced by decomposing human bodies work wonders in rejuvenating nutrient-depleted soil? Have you by chance seen the rehabilitation project on Route 9? The flowers are beautiful. Why do you do what you do? My father taught me that everyone has an ethical duty to love their fellow man. I'm sure you're familiar with the platitude, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you take that platitude seriously like I do, then you want to help your neighbor when they're in need. Is killing your neighbor when they're in need what your father intends? My father is a salesman. He sees a need and supplies a product which will momentarily fulfill that need. Cooper, the world of sales is cutthroat. I know, I deal with the winners and the losers every single day. That's not what I asked you. Is killing your neighbor when they're in need what your father intends? No. My father would prefer that his product not cause death. That's why he requires that all his close associates abstain from drug use. No tracks, he's clean. That's encouraging. Normally I could trust a man completely who doesn't drink alcohol, but maybe you don't fit the mold. But he understands that by selling drugs, he will eventually sever the hand that feeds him. It's a problem that he continually struggles with. Kill them. It's the only ethical thing to do. You have to sever the hand that feeds you. If your father doesn't want his clientele to die, why are you murdering them? It's not murder, it's my higher calling. How is murder a higher calling? Like I said, it's not murder. Every drug addict will eventually succumb to their addiction or quit using. There's no middle ground. But the reason they're dying is because of you. No, the reason they're dying is because they're shadows. Shadows. You see, so many people live out their lives in quiet lostness. Their presence is as meaningless as their absence. And when their lives are over, they simply vanish like shadows. But if there are enough shadows to dim the light, then those who were once meaningless now become meaningful because they serve a purpose. And what is their purpose, Cooper? Their deaths make everyone else realize that they too are shadows. I have taken the least in society and raised them up as martyrs. When we can recognize that we are nothing but shadows, we begin to understand the universal human fallacy. 
All of us are controlled by something. If we aren't controlled, then what is? That depends on the person. For a drug addict, the drugs are in control. For a businessman, money. Sexual desires, materialism, power, fame. All of these things control us. Our higher calling is to be controlled by the right thing. Are you controlled by the right thing? I believe I am. What's in control of you, Cooper? God. God. God is in control of you. As much as possible, yes. So God made you kill all these people? No, the people killed themselves. God uses me as a vehicle to alert others to the fact that these people even exist. A person here, a person there. No one pays attention. But the more shadows who are lost, the more likely it is to affect you. I don't want to make examples of any more people than I have to, but like I said, it takes a lot of shadows to dim the light. And if people don't get the point, then I will certainly have to continue. I want to thank you for this interview, Cooper. You're welcome. Oh yes, I have one last question to ask you. What does the E in your name stand for? Easton. It's my street name. You the one that came out here all early and shit. It obviously don't bother you too much, all right? Yo, come on, man. I designed the system so there's no interaction between parties. We can draw routes of distribution. You never be in the same place twice. You never meet the buyer. If he's found out, he'd fucking kill me. I know. I know. Oh, no, this can't be. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Cooper, come on. this is Dad. <laughs> I'm gonna need you. Cooper, give me a call. Come on. Cooper, come on. Dad. Come on. Cooper, Damn it! When you, oh, no. when you get a chance, give me a call back. Cooper, you need to call us and tell us if you're coming for Easter. Okay, buddy? Give us a call. Sniper unit in place. We have visual. Cooper, hope things are going well. I'm gonna need you to come on over tomorrow night. Cooper, this is Dad. Call me back as soon as you can. Cooper, when you finish inputting your sales into the computer, I need it back. ASAP. We can't let that fall into the wrong hands. Cooper, the feds have surrounded my house. You need to get the fuck out of town. For God's sake, don't talk to anyone about anything. And do not try to find out. I'll be in touch. It's secure. Yeah, we need an ambulance for a gunshot wound. Roger that. <laughs> Unfortunately, Cooper, that woman looks pretty bad. They're probably not going to get here in time to save you. <laughs> but, like you said, we're all just shadows. Here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> so you watched it, huh? Sorry, we had to tape over your home video. I guess by now you realize that we aren't reporters and you weren't really giving. We had to edit out all that stuff about your mom trying to abort you with Accutane. That smallpox thing was a real tearjerker. Besides, with your schizophrenia, you could evoke sympathy with any jury, and, and we wouldn't want sympathy for a serial killer, now would we? But, judging at the looks of things, it won't matter one way or the other. Don't you remember? I'm Catherine, and this is my cameraman, Tony. <laughs> we met you on the train. Metro Park. Next stop, Matusin. Matusin, next stop. Sorry to 
bother you, but do you by chance have any money for a train ticket? I can't seem to find mine. Yeah, sure. How much you need? Ten dollars. story you might be interested in. Call me. See, we thought it was your dad who was killing all those people. That's why we were tracking him on the train that night. But then we found out it was all you. Thank you for making our job so much easier. I must be confusing you with someone else. Maybe you're one of his delusions. Happy birthday, Cooper. Thanks, Dad. I know you're not really into reading, but my dad gave me Kierkegaard on my 18th birthday, so I thought I'd continue the tradition. You want to know what your other present is? Yeah. You're going to be working for me as soon as you graduate. But don't tell your mom. She'll get mad. That's awesome. I've got big plans for you. Who are you talking to, buddy? Oh, well, this is Muriel, and this is East. Well, how are you two doing? They're fine. They've got big plans, too. Why do you encourage him, huh? Isn't he screwed up enough as it is without you egging him on? How do you think he got that way, huh, Donna? Huh? Where are you going? Hold on, Cooper. So what are you going to do? Celebrate your son's birthday by snorting some coke? You will never let me forget it, will you? You know how much I love him. You don't love anybody but yourself. Will we share that in common? Fuck you. Go to hell! What do you think we are, Donna? Look around, huh? Hey! You do not walk away from me!
at ease And I don't need a mother To hold me when I weep I just need a girl, yeah To rock me till I sleep Some room so I can breathe 